Hey YouTube viewers, um, this is a video on how to take care of dragons and just showing off uh, my my personal collection. Um, as you can see, I have two of them in this this 75 gallon tank. Um, one's a male over here. He's a yellow sandfire from um, what I can get out of, and she is het for tra she's 66 percent het translucent and uh, double leatherback. Her mother was double leatherback and her father was translucent. And she's kind of turned out to be this orange, having this orange beard and a brownish back. When she's sleeping or in the pool, her translucent side kind of pops out a little bit. Um, she gets a little green. Um, as you can see, um, I have Eco Earth. Uh, there's many different substrates you can keep a dragon on. Newspaper, just one of the top or paper or carpet. Um, which is the top for most people just because they're afraid of um, uh, constipation um, uh, which is uh, not so common as people may say um, it's really just about how you take care of them if you guys don't give them their uh, baths on a monthly basis don't give them make sure, making sure they don't get water properly every day and their vegetables every day um, that can happen, but as long as you give them their monthly baths and you keep up on their water, uh, which is I do as a direct approach, then I've never had a problem with. Um, I've talked to many people who've had problems with sand. Um, I had these guys on sand for the longest time, never had a problem. Uh, I changed it just because it changed the color of my dragon's skin tone to uh, a pink and a blue. Uh, it tinted their skin, um, which I found is common. And it got on my nerves, so I destroyed it, or I got rid of it. I changed over to Eco Earth, which all it is is grounded up coconut. And uh, if they eat it, you know, all it is is coconut's just basically a vegetable anyway, I believe. So it's not going to hurt them at all. Um, or it's a fruit, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery to me. Um, so it's not going to hurt them at all. Um, you know... Um, you can see I have a little lettuce pile back there. It's um, if the dragons want it, they can have it. But really, it's just leftover lettuce from the day before that the uh, crickets that are running around in here eat. I don't have too many running around, but you can see some. I have a few here and there, um, and that just helps keep their hunger down so they don't bite my uh, dragons so much. Um, and I really haven't had much problem with that since I've been doing this. Uh, you can see there's their food dish. Uh, they haven't had lettuce today. Um, you can see the boy over here. He's on a cat litter. And, uh, this is all natural uh, cat litter. Uh, it is Fuller's Earth Clay. And it's uh, completely safe. Um, I could eat it if I wanted to. People actually use it uh, in spas and things like that. And um, the purpose was that behind that was uh, they're actually using it as a litter box for one point in time. And uh, since I changed it out and redid their cage, he's been just laying in there, sleeping in it, and he kind of made it his own bed. He loves the feel of it versus the earth, or versus the uh, eco earth. And you can see over here, he's kind of dug out a little nest for himself. And uh, at nighttime, he kind of goes around in there, and he gets himself all settled and goes to sleep right there. And she, she likes to sleep on the stick over there, the far back left corner, um, and she hangs out on this end. And you know they do a decent job. Um, they're an, I call them the odd couple because they're never with each other, um, which is you know not it's common but also not common. Um, it depends. He's he's the dominant one of the cage. And by that I mean he um, she views him as the dominant one, so they try to keep him keep uh, keep separate from each other. Um, but when it comes springtime, they're uh, all mating frenzy and it's just crazy in there. <laughs> Uh, I'll keep it PG, and um, so. But you can see, um, this is all. This is a paint paint pan, a plastic paint pan, and uh, I just sat it in there and just filled it up with litter. Um, you notice that I do not have a water bowl. Um, some people keep a water bowl in there. I just give them a monthly to bi-weekly bath, and um, I take this this can right here. And you may say it's a pesticide container. Well, you're right. It's supposed to be that. Um, but I just fill it up with plain old water. Uh, I dechlorinate it with a uh, dechlorinator, and I go around to all my tanks and I spray it in there. That's why you have all this this nasty stuff right here. And 
that's how they get their water. Um, I do that every other day because um, they get most of their liquid from um, the vegetables themselves. Um, another uh, thing I feed them, uh, let's go to diet now that we've gotten the cage set up decent. Um, diet, I do lettuce every day. Uh, when I have some fruits, I give them some fruit, such as strawberry, mango, um, things like in that nature. They love strawberry. Um, another thing I do is carrots. I do, uh, I do actually do iceberg lettuce occasionally, just a little bit, uh, just because it has a lot of water in there. Um, and so as long as you don't feed them on a constant like that, you're fine. I do green lettuce or romaine lettuce. I don't do um, the collard greens. Uh, I could if I wanted to, but I don't bother with it. It's easier for me just to grab a head of, of romaine lettuce and call it a day. Um, I have gotten her to eat the purple onions and carrots. She loves carrots, like I said. Um, and it's really, sh they love this, the pea pods, uh, sweet pea pods. Loves those, love those things. They love peas. Um, another thing, um, she's actually stopped eating. Um, I don't know for what reason. It's, it's still a mystery to me. Uh, but she got to a point to where she was skinny. And as you can see, she really is a, she's really filled in nicely now. Um, I've actually been giving her baby food. And what's in this, this is uh, mixed vegetables and beef. So it's mostly vegetables. A very high in protein, which the dragons will need to you know, fatten them up. So all I do is I take a little needle. Um, you know, the, the ones they use to, uh, really can't say, um, the needle is the, the, the body of a needle without the uh, sharp end, I guess you could say. Um, and, uh, I stick it, stick it near the mouth and I get her to eat it. And then I, uh, I kind of just, she kind of just bites into it. And when she bites onto it, I go ahead and I just squirt it in and she starts to eat it. Um. And that's how she, she she's that's the only thing she, I've been getting her to be able to eat right now. She won't eat lettuce. Um, if you guys have a suggestion, I'm open for it. Um, uh, he's been eating perfectly fine. Uh, also, I do cr uh, besides crickets and baby food, lettuce. Uh, I do dubia roaches. I have two cultures thriving right now. Um, I also do super worms on occasion. Um, you know, I've never had a problem with their hard shells. People say. Um, as long as they're stuffed to the bone, they, uh, are actually not as, uh, crunchy as most people think. Um, and that's just about it, whatever else I can find. Uh, I like to go outside and grab dandelions since, um, I live, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Dandelions don't really have pesticide, and if they do, I usually clean them off anyway. And, uh, they love to eat those guys, uh, especially him. He loves those things. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much their diet. Um. They love to swim, especially her. Um, and um, I like to have a little bit of caves in there for her to dig in. She's actually dug in those once before. Um, but that's when she gets really crazy. Usually she's uh, running around everywhere. Right now she's been pretty calm. Um, I have some stone and bricks in there you can see. And that actually helps keep their uh, nails from growing out too long. Um, you know, her, her nails are... Uh, pretty dolls and she likes to run around and try to do whatever um besides that she's been doing good um and uh his is getting a little longer so i have to start trimming them soon but yeah um it's a simple setup i have 150 watt heat uh, power sun in there um people complain i don't know understand breeders they uh, say sometimes power suns aren't good some people say they're great um, and they also, people argue about the strip bulb, which that's the UVB too. Uh, well, that's a 10.0. Like I said, that's 150 power sun. Um, right now her basking spot is about 90 degrees, which is fine since it's the winter time. So when it gets, uh, warmer out, it'll warm up in here very fast. Um, so that's perfectly fine for him right now for the winter time. Um. If you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, like I said, I do both just because of that extra lighting, and I like to have the extra UVB on the other end. Um, I've never had a problem with either of the bulbs. In fact, I've noticed the power sun actually brightens them up a lot, lot, uh, lot more, and that's made by Zoomed. Uh, it's an expensive bulb, but you get a year warranty with it, um, and I've never had an issue with it yet. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, please post. Um, subscribe if you wish. Uh, I'd love to see your feedback. Thanks.